Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my creative world. In today's video, I'll be giving you guys a quick and dirty editing breakdown of the following image. Quick note before we get started, if you head over to my Gumroad, you can download the original Photoshop document as well as the Fire Effects asset pack that I used while editing this image. Links in the description below. Let's get started. First I make leveling and crop adjustments before going on to cutting out my subject from the background. I choose to use the pen tool in this case. I then create two copies of my subject layer, darkening one and brightening the other. After adding an inverted layer mask to each of those layers, I paint white on the layer mask to selectively adjust the exposure of my subject. This is very similar to dodge and burn, but on a much broader scale. I brighten areas that I want to bring more attention to and darken areas that I want to take away attention from. For skin retouching, I like to use frequency separation. My goal here is to remove any blemishes and even out the lighting a bit. After I was finished, I merged the frequency separation layers into a single layer. My selection was a bit too tight around the hair, so I used a soft round brush to paint in the stray hair strands, sampling colors from the subject layer. Next was dodging and burning. Starting with the frequency separation layer, I created two copies of my subject like I did before, brightening one and darkening the other. On the inverted layer mask, I painted in white where I wanted the adjustment to be visible. For the background, I could have easily found a ground image texture online, but I chose to create it in 3D so I have a little bit more control over the lighting. I brought my cutout subject into Cinema 4D, then I brought in a simple plane object and threw on a cobblestone texture. The lighting of my scene was just an orange light close to the ground. Once I was finished, I brought my 3D background into Photoshop and started to sketch up guidelines for my fire effects. I find this to be a better method than just throwing in my stock fire images right away because I'm able to define a more dynamic placement of my fire effects. Once I was happy with the sketch, I reduced the opacity of that layer and then started bringing in my fire images and sending the blending mode of those layers to screen. The fire and embers assets that I used in this image are from my fire effects asset pack which you can get over on my Gumroad. I used a combination of Transform, Warp, Perspective Warp, and Puppet Warp to get my fire images to follow along my previously sketched guidelines. To make the fire fit into the scene a bit more, I used Path Blur in the Blur Gallery on each fire element individually. I prefer this method over the typical motion blur filter as I can define a more accurate and complex curve of motion for the blur. Then I adjusted the levels of each fire element to make it a bit brighter looking. I thought the image would look good with some sparks coming from the subject's hand, so I found a photo from a royalty-free stock image website called pixabay.com and brought it in. I then repeated all the previous steps for the fire on the other side. Here I am bringing in the embers assets to make the scene a bit more dynamic. A lot of people tend to go overboard with embers and sparks, so just keep that in mind when editing. Less is more with this. Next I added some glow to the fire by creating a layer, setting the blending mode to screen, and with a large soft brush with a flow set to around 20%, I painted orange over the fire. I repeated the step again but with the layer blending mode set to color dodge, painting over just the brightest parts of the fire with a darker orange color. To finish off the fire effects and add some realism, I did two more steps. First, I merged all visible layers into a new layer by holding Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and pressing E. On this new layer, I added a Gaussian blur, and then an inverted layer mask. With a soft white brush, I painted in randomly around the fire and areas near the fire. After this, I again merged all visible layers into a new layer. I then went to Filter, Distort, and Displace. While keeping the default settings, I pressed OK. Then I selected my fire displacement mask, which is just a Photoshop document filled with a layer of grayscale wavy noise texture. I pressed F to duplicate this displacement filter to make the effect stronger. After adding an inverted layer mask to that layer, I used a soft brush with a flow set to 100 and painted in white just over the areas of the fire and around the fire, being careful not to distort the face. This step is important in showing the wavy blur that happens around objects that are very hot. At this point the image is 95% done and I'm just finishing it off with some sharpening, adding chromatic aberration and color toning. For color toning, I first merged all visible layers into a new layer and opened it up into Camera Raw where I played around with the tone curves, levels, saturation, and added some film grain. 
Finally, I added a color lookup adjustment layer and loaded in a lookup table. Here is the before. And this is the final edit. Guys, if you like this video, maybe give it a thumbs up. And this is a relatively new type of video that I'm starting to make, so if you guys have any feedback on how I can make these videos better for you, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. And until next time, stay creative.